I got a free CPU cooler. Can I use it to overclock? Let's find out. So you guys don't know this, but I attempted to overclock my Ryzen 3 2200G to 4 GHz and failed. I was using the included RAID stealth cooler, which is nice, but can't handle these higher voltages. I used to have my CPU at 4.1 GHz, but that was when I had my A8 9600 and this beefy Extreme Revision 2 for cooler from Arctic. But today, I'm going to try and live up to my previous processor's clock speed and use this free cooler I got from a friend. So the cooler I got was an Arctic Freezer 7, another cooler from Arctic, so it shouldn't have any problems. It has a single 92mm fan, supports most mainstream sockets, and if you get it new, it has pre-applied thermal paste. So I've actually had it running in my system for quite some time now, but I finally decided to overclock. The great thing about these Raven Ridge processors is that not only can you overclock the cores, but you can also overclock the integrated Vega graphics. Which I think is kind of cool because I couldn't do that with my 9600. Anyways, I'll be using Ryzen Master to overclock, but if you're following along, you can also use your BIOS. So I'm going to go straight up to 4GHz, then adjust the voltage to get it stable. After that, I'll push the Vega 8 graphics to 1300 MHz, then adjust the voltage accordingly. Well, without further ado, let's dive straight in. Okay, so I have my CPU set to 4 GHz, so now let's restart Windows and run Prime95. Okay, so Ryzen Master is not working. I ran Cinebench, and it was basically the same as last time. Windows says it's at 3.5 GHz, but it still turbos to like 3.96 GHz. So that's strange. If I'm just reading it wrong, please let me know. So, as I suspected, after overclocking using my BIOS, the task manager shows that I'm running at 4 GHz. It crashed at 1.4 volts, so I'm going to try to up that a little bit and see what it gets. So I ended up lowering the voltage to 1.425, but even that seems to need a little more. I ran Prime95 for roughly half an hour and no crash. So does that mean I can move on to the Vega 8 graphics? Well, the CPU idled at 35 degrees Celsius and maxed out at around 88 degrees. I could probably squeeze a couple hundred megahertz out of the graphics, but I'm going to try and avoid going over 100 degrees. If I want better graphical performance, then I'd leave the CPU at 3.5 or 3.7 gigahertz and push the GPU farther than normal. But for now, 4 gigahertz is my goal, so let's do some benchmarking. So, in Cinebench R15, I got a score of 604 for the CPU test, and for the OpenGL test, I got 56.14 FPS. In Superposition Benchmark, I got a score of 5,271 using the 720p low preset. In 3 Mark Skydiver, I got a score of 9,316. So far, nothing seems significantly better than last time, but I'm going to attempt to overclock the GPU a little and see what happens. Anyways, in Firestrike, I got a score of 2,659. Not much of an improvement. And in Benchmark, I got a score of 864. So, these results don't seem significantly better, so I'm going to overclock the GPU a little and put this cooler to the test. Okay, I have it set to 1300 MHz, so let's see what the attempts are now. Okay, well that did not work. Possibly because I didn't up the GFX and SOC voltages, that's just one possibility. One thing I did find out was that I was actually running the Vega graphics at 400 MHz, which surely explains a lot. So without using Ryzen Master, I set it to 1100 MHz, which it should have been at to begin with. So at 1100 MHz it should still be stable, so I ran Superposition Benchmark. My score is basically the same as last time. 3D Mark Skydiver, same as last time. CPU test for Cinebench, I got a score of 605. The OpenGL, I got 56.90 FPS. So nothing really different here, but has gaming improved any? Well, in Minecraft, again with shaders, I got the same basic results. Same goes for Fortnite. I didn't benchmark for very long, but it didn't seem to choke up as bad as it did last time. So after doing all of this, you might still be wondering, what did this actually do? 
Well, video editing should be a whole lot smoother, and the overall usage of the computer should be better. If you want better gaming performance, then comment below and I'll do another video just for overclocking the iGPU. Well, can you overclock using this cooler? Yes, but it can only handle so much heat, so at 4 GHz, the max temperature is around 88 degrees. A little toasty, but it gets the job done. Well, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you didn't, you know where to go. While you're there, consider subscribing to the channel. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.